Hello everyone. So on behalf of CDP Network, I welcome you all for this training. Hi, hi. Hi, yeah. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yeah, hi. So I am from the hey, Manchester. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello, hello. I hope you all are doing good. So welcome for the training session. This is the first session of Palo Alto. So I welcome you all. So I am uh, talking on behalf of CDP Networks. So I welcome you all for the training. So first, let me just give you a brief of what you can expect from this training session. So this training session on uh, Palo Alto uh, will be for five days. So mainly weekdays at same timing in the evening for two hours. So uh, what we have done is we have given these sessions for free. So some part of the syllabus will be discussed by our trainer in these five sessions. And these sessions are free for you to sit. And uh, after that, by the end of uh, uh, all these five sessions, we will be announcing our uh, other session, which will be a paid session. So these sessions, the details of these sessions will be given to you by the end of uh, this week. And based on the feedback of the students, means the participants who are there in this free batch, uh, we'll take your input and then we will announce a date and time for the batches, which uh, will be preceding these batches. So mainly we are planning to have these sessions in January because as you know, uh, holiday season is going on and people may not be available, but still uh, we will take the feedback and probably sometimes in January we will announce the uh, the paid session. So what uh, as a policy of CDP network, what we do is uh, we give 50% off for the students who have attended our free session. So uh, uh, when we give the feedback form by the end of the session, you can of course fill that form. And if you're interested to sit for the deep sessions, like the deep dive, we can say of these, uh, you know, uh, the introductory session, then you can avail that offer. And as we have already attended uh, these free sessions, we are giving those for 50% off. So sit for the session, ask, ask good questions. We have a very well uh, experienced trainer with us, Mr. Nikhil, and he will be explaining you. He'll be uh, giving his introduction first then explaining you about what is covered in the free sessions and what will be in the paid sessions. So feel free to ask questions by the you know end of the session. What we generally do is we give around 15 minutes for the participants to ask questions. So if uh, uh, the session is over by that time, uh, 15 minutes uh, you'll be getting. So what I suggest, if you're not comfortable to come on the mic, you can of course ask the questions in the chat box. Uh, even our trainer will take those questions. And uh, of course you are welcome to, uh, you know, speak up on the mic by the end of the session also. So uh, hopefully you will enjoy the session and uh, you get good learning experience out of it. So now I I, uh, I hand over the session uh, to our trainer, Mr. Nikhil, and he will take over from now. Thank you. Hello, guys. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm audible. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Hi. Yes, you are audible. Yes, okay. yes sir. You are audible. Okay. So can you see my screen, guys? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. So... Are guys yes, able sir. to see my screen? Okay, okay. Yes. Just a second, okay. Yeah, yes. So, hi guys, my name is Nikhil. Okay, so I will be your CC, or sorry, not Palo Alto trainer. Okay, for the next five sessions, that is a free version, as Wasim has already told you. And after that, we will do some paid sessions, okay, in which we will cover around 25 to 26 sessions. Okay, so just let me show you that what we are going to do in the... uh these five days. So basically we will start with the uh, introduction to network security and firewall. Okay, in this we will learn what is malware, what are the firewall technologies and the Palo Alto network firewalls that we are gonna learn. We are gonna learn about the why we need Palo Alto network. And then we will today onwards we will see the installation of the Palo Alto firewall in the VMware. I hope you guys are familiar with the EVNG and the VM VMware concepts. Okay. And we will see some basic CLI. Okay. And after that, we will start the dashboard of the Palo Alto. Basically, it's a GUI. We will take a graphical uh, graphic access of this Palo Alto. 
we will do on both on the CLI version and the graphic modes also. Okay, so in the dashboard, we have a dashboard tab. Okay, I will introduce you the dashboard tab on the day two, and we will do some configuration on the Palo Alto firewall and both the CLI and G, uh, GUI also. And we will also configure DNS and NTP. NTP is basically network translation protocol. <clears throat> Network time protocol, sorry. So we are, uh, after that, we will see the working with the Palo Alto firewall. In this, we will understand what is management interface, okay, and the interface details. As you guys know, we have different types of interfaces in the Palo Alto, okay. I will go through all those interfaces on the day three session. And then on the day four, we will start with the zones and routing in the Palo Alto firewall. I hope you guys have already done the CCNA part in which you guys know how to perform the routing so same types of routing we will perform in the palo alto so on the day four we will start with some zone details in this we have different zones like dmz demilitarized zone inside zone and the outside zone and after that we will understand some routing protocols okay i will start with some basic concepts of routing protocols in this we will understand routing protocols what is ad what is metric and what are routing tables after that here in this palo alto we have a virtual router concept okay after understanding the virtual router concept we will start the static routing after that we will do some more lectures on the routing concepts and the and some security policies so here we will understand what is default routing how to configure default routing on the palo alto and some dynamic protocols like here we are going to cover rip and ospf we will basically do all this stuff on the GUI and we will do the redistribution also. So <clears throat> if I may ask, what is redistribution? Can you guys tell me? <clears throat> One Anyone? protocol is two. <clears throat> One protocol. Like One... RIP2 SPF. Yes, yes. To communicate between different protocols. Okay. In the OSPF, yes. we have a concept of ASBR. What is ASBR out? It's, it's in the uh, CCN and CCNP both, if you guys have done ABR, ASBR. So all those things we are going to discuss, okay. And in some, we will here cover the security policies, some concepts and theory behind security policies and granular criteria. That's a security, uh, security uh, policy, granular criteria and control. So, <clears throat> and this is the paid one slavers, okay. I will tell you about all the slavers in the last class last session we'll see it so today we'll start with some basic terminologies okay and i will share uh, these pdfs in the group also whatever pdf we will cover uh in the classes i'm gonna share all those pdfs so that you guys don't have to make uh notes on the your hard copies so today we will start with some common network security terms basically whatever you do like if you want to go for the ethical hacking, if you want to go for the COMT exam, if you want to do CCNP, CCI security. So these terms you will see everywhere. Assets, vulnerability, any firewall you do, you have to start with these terms. Okay. So there are some common network security terms. Okay. Those are asset, vulnerability, exploit, threat, attack, risk, and countermeasures. You guys don't have to uh, like go through every line you just want you just have to know what uh, this mean is okay what do you mean by asset so asset can be anything which the organization is invested so on anything anything any physical thing okay any non-living thing in which our organization has invested some money okay and which is valuable to the organization we call that as asset so asset can be anything like properties vehicles heavy equipments plants buildings employees computers data intellectual properties etc so basically there are two types of security one is physical security and one is network security so who does the physical security work so basically for that we have some guards okay but our role is this network security so we are gonna see that how we can secure our network so these are the things that we are going to secure like our computers our employees data our security company's data and all those things so after that we have a new term which is called vulnerability 
So vulnerability can be defined as a weakness in a system or its design. We know that everything is man-made. If everything is man-made, okay, if anything is man-made, then we can see that there is a chance of error in it. Okay. If we can't able to find error in two years, then maybe in the next three years, we will get a new technology. Then that will be a error. So vulnerability. So can you guys give me any example or any protocol in which you can see the vulnerability? Like we use some protocol that in that we don't have any vulnerability, but after some time a new protocol came, then we saw SSH. that. Yes, SSH and Telnet. So just Telnet. let okay, just let me show you uh, in the workshop also that how. Are you guys familiar with the uh, Wireshark? shark? What is Wireshark? shark? Yes. Yes. Okay. Packet for monitoring purpose. Yes, it's for the monitoring purpose. It's a monitoring tool. So just have you guys done some practicals on the EVNG? Do you know what I'm doing right now? Okay, just let me introduce. So this is our EVNG. Okay, it is installed on the VMware. Okay. So I have installed on the uh, EVNG on the VMware. So what I'm doing here, I'm selecting one node. Okay. And I'm using the Cisco IL image. So this is my layer two image and this is my layer three. So layer three is for the router. So I am adding two nodes here. This is the number of nodes to add. So if you want to give any name here, like I want to give router one, so it will show router one. And from here you can see, uh, you can select any image. I'm selecting the router image. I'm using it. Okay. If you want to here increase the, if you want to increase the RAM from here, you can increase it. And if it is one here, it means you will get four interfaces. If I will write two here, then I will get eight interfaces. Okay. I'm writing one here because one interface is enough for me. So I'm connecting both the uh, interfaces of both these routers and I'm just opening it. Let me just close it down. So what is the first thing that we are going to do before accessing the telnet? Answer me if you guys have done the... What I have to, to configure? configure? What is the first thing that I have to do? Right now, first of all, virtual terminal line PTY. Okay, line before line PTY, do I have to do anything? Before line PTY, putting the line PTY, I have, do I have to do anything? No, first thing that I have to uh, do is I have to give the IP address on these interfaces. Right. Okay. So what is my interface? It's E0 slash zero. So from here we can see that I have configured IP address on this interface, which is our E0 slash zero. Okay. Should I use the same network here or different network? Different. Different same. network. You can different use the same network, network as well as the different network, but for different network, you have to provide uh, protocols. Okay, for different network, I have to provide the protocols. For connectivity. Mm. So we will use same network here. 255.0. Two no shut. Let us see if they are pinging or not. They can ping because they are in the same network. Okay. So they are pinging right now. So what is the first thing that I have to do? What do you mean by line VTY? For remote access, you are providing... Okay. So to how many users this router will give access telnet to? This line will signify. Okay. Suppose on uh, every image, you know, on real devices, you will see might be 0 to 15, 
ओके ऑन सम डिवाइस यू विल सी जीरो टू एट इट डिपेंड्स ऑन दी आई एस वर्जन ओके सो हियर इट इज शोइंग जीरो टू फोर इट मीन्स आई कैन गेव ऑफ दिस नोट सिक्स एक्सेस टू हाउ मेनी डिवाइसेज फाइव डिवाइसेज फाइव डिवाइसेज एट अ टाइम ओके सो आई एम गिविंग हियर एक्सेस टू दी फाइव डिवाइसेज सो वट आई हैव टू राइट इट इयर जीरो टू फोर ओके आफ्टर दैट आई हैव टू यूज वन कमांड विच इज ट्रांसपोर्ट इनपुट either you can use here all but we are accessing the telnet okay but before that na let me capture it. Uh, so if i want to capture this link na i have to just go here right click on this device capture and here we will just go into the e0/0 so it, it will open the wire shark so let us just go here on this transport input telnet after that i have to use one command login local why we are using login local command so that local user can access the local database for user okay. if i will write login local here it means it will ask for the id and username and password okay so i will give it one Uh, let me give one password here which is ccna exit let me give one username and the password here okay so can we access telnet right uh, from this device which is our node 7 so what is the command i am accessing this telnet just with the help of ip so what is the username that i have give i have give the username ccna and the password as ccna okay so here we can see that we have access this device so let me see if we have captured so from here you can filter just i want a telnet traffic okay so if you want to see what i want to show you you just have to click here and just on the click on the follow and just go into the tcp stream okay so from here you can see that uh, this thing is na not encrypted if i will write something here if i will put something on the description it will show here just it will not encrypt anything from here you can see our username it's showing ccna and it is showing the password so it will be very easy if a hacker just capture your packet na like from the wireshark tool we have just captured this packet and we can see all the information here and whatever the command i will write here it will show you here but we have a protocol which is a telnet protocol <clears throat> so let me enable the uh, telnet so what is the first thing that we oh, sorry not telnet uh, we will configure ssh okay just now we have configured the telnet protocol so now we will configure the ssh so what is the first thing that we have to do what is the first change we have to do for the telnet oh, for the ssh change host name change the host name why do we why we change the host name key material rsa fd fqd in yes because of the rsa algorithm because how rsa uh, makes we know that rsa makes a key pair okay and how does this, uh, that key pair uh, it makes the key pair it makes the key pair with the help of the host name and the domain name so what is the first thing that you. yes first thing that we will configure is the host name let me give the host name as cdp okay now i will give the ip domain name uh, let us give cdp uh, let us write it in the capital cdp dot local now i have to configure line vty 0 to 4 transport input ssh what is the next thing that we have to do login local login local after that we will give uh, crypto e generate rsa okay so it is asking for the how many bits we want okay so we will use 2048 okay we know that the more uh, more the bits are it is it will be more secure 
uh if i will write 512 then it it is not that much recommended if i will write 1024 then it is an average but we are using little bit above average okay so as you can see here the ssh 1.99 has been enabled so if i want to change the ssh version what is the command it's a IP simple SSH command version two. yes ip ssh version Two. Okay, if you guys will write 512 here, na, maybe you guys will not able to uh, go into this version, SSH version 2. Okay, so let me just give the username and password here. Let us give the username same CCNA and the password as CCNA. So now we will access this. So how we can access this SSH? Using software, yes. okay. Using software, but what is the command? It is a L username, yes. Username and the IP address. IP address. Let us see. So it is asking for the password. My password is CCNA. Okay, it's showing incorrect. Username CCNA. Username is also okay. Okay, sorry. Username was CCNA. So let me do it again. SSH hyphen L. Uh, what was the CCNA and the IP address one nine two two one six eight one dot two. Its IP address was one dot two. Na do show IP in BR. Okay, one dot two. Yes. Okay, so it has access this node 7, which has a host name as CDP. Okay, now let us see what is the difference between uh, Telnet and SSH. So if I will capture here, as you can see, the protocol running is SSH version 2. Okay, so we have access this. If I will capture it, go into the follow TCP stream. So here we can see that all our data is encrypted. Encrypted. Okay. So for it is uh, not like that, that hacker cannot solve this thing. Okay. He can solve this thing, but obviously these are the algorithms. We know that al algorithms, we can uh, change, reverse the algorithms also. Okay. If our data is in encrypted form, if we can decrypt that uh, data, then hackers can also easily decrypt that data. Okay. But it is little bit or we can say it is more secure than the telnet if hacker will just try to capture that packet then there is a chance that he might not able to access our data so what are these things so these are the vulnerabilities for the protocols okay so here what i was telling you that our telnet is a protocol which is vulnerable which is vulnerable so vulnerability is a concept in which we have a chance of errors or mistakes by the human. Okay. So when this protocol came, Telnet, so we have a concept like this is the best protocol. But after some times when people saw things in this Telnet, when they try to capture those packets, they see that our data is decrypted. It is not encrypted. Anyone can see our data. So they made new protocol which is SSH, okay. And on the SSH, we have a bits like 512. Now these bits can go up to the 4096, okay. Now we have a next thing called as exploit. So what do you mean by exploit? So exploit can be defined as a way or method or tool in which, which is used by an attacker on a vulnerability. So it is kind of a concept of attacking on the vulnerability so if there is a vulnerability then there is a exploitation exploitation on what on the vulnerability and because of this our assets will be insecure so it is used to cause the damage to the target network or a system 
This exploit can be anything. It can be a software which may cause a buffer overflow. What is buffer overflow? We know that we have a buffer memory concept. So whenever that buffer, uh, it will exceed the data on the buffer memory. We call that as a buffer overflow. And we have a concepts of social engineering. Like we have, you guys maybe heard of phishing attacks and all those attacks, which is used for the hack the password. We will see on the next uh, slide. We will see. We will talk about all these attacks. Okay. So here we can see that attacker creates exploits to target the software vulnerability, and exploits can be arrived via attachment on the email messages. Okay. Compromise websites, social networking sites. So attackers can directly target. Vulnerable servers. Now we have a next concept of threat. So what is threat? So we can define threat as anything danger to a asset. So threat can be accidentally triggered or intentionally exploited. So here we have some different terms. Okay, like hackers, viruses, lockups, identify threat. So these are all threat to our system. Or we can say to our network. So what is attack? Attack can be defined as any action that can be taken by an attacker to harm an assets. So we are just going uh, overview for these network security terms. So you guys know what is risk. So basically risk can be defined as potential for loss, compromise, damage, destruction or other negative consequences to an organization's asset. So we will see that how we can overcome these yeah. risk and all those things. So basically we can uh, overcome these with the help of these countermeasures. So we will see on the next PDF how we can uh, countermeasure all these problems. So here we can see we have a concept of malware. So malware basically it is a short form for the malicious software. So this malicious software can be either a file or a program or can be a code we know that hacker use anything it it can use files okay uh it can use the programs it can use the codes okay so we will see how every type of uh attack na has a different name okay so malware can be any I'm visualizing. I'm warning uh, this is my machine. Like. I'm warning Kali and this is my machine. My machine experience. Okay. So malware can be, it can be a program or it can be a code. So malware is any program or a file that is harmful to a computer user. Basically, it is delivered over a network that infects or explores or steals our data. Okay. It can be conduct virtually any behavior an attacker wants. And malware is an inclusive term for all types of malicious softwares. Okay, so what are all those types of attacks? So these are the t uh, things like viruses, worms, trojans, rootkit, spyware. We will cover all those things. We will see what are these things. Okay, and we will see that how we can uh, secure those things with the help uh, with the help of some. Certain technologies that us that is provided on, on the Palo Alto Fiverr. We will see what is adware, scareware, botnets, logic bombs, keyloggers, and etc. So there are many tools that can identify malware on the network, such as packet captures to analyze. Okay. So we have some tools: NetFlow, IPS, Advanced Malware Protection, Cisco Firepower, which is of Cisco, but it can be implemented on anywhere. So we'll start with virus. What is virus? Virus is basically a malicious code that is attached to the executable files that are often a on a regular application. But virus require end user activation to damage the system or a device. You guys are familiar with the adware. Uh, whenever you open a website like a torrent website, you can see or you if you if you guys will open some APK files. If you guys will download some APK files, then you can see these types of attacks. So these adware stands for the advertising supported malware. So it works by executing advertisement to generate revenue for the hackers. Like you guys will see uh, if there is an icon like this to download this file. 
and there is some link <coughs> if you guys will just click on this link for the first time it will open <coughs> a new website and on that new website you will see some ads so what what are those ads those ads are generating revenue to the hackers but next time when you will click that ad oh sorry that link it will download that file so if you guys have just download some torrent files you guys have gone through these things okay you guys uh, have seen these things so adware can uh, it is any type of advertising support software so adware will play display or download advertisement automatically on a user's computer so we have a next thing at ransomware so this is the we can say it is the most dangerous kind of a virus okay we have named it at ransomware so how ransomware works so how ransomware works so ransomware works by encrypting the hard drive and all files on a system so basically what happens in the ransomware na suppose you have a file certain files like dot pdf dot xml any kind of files so what will happen if a ransomware type of attack happen to your files so you have a you have a folder suppose of cdp and you have 10 files there so all those 10 files extension will get changed from dot pdf whatever type suppose uh, it will use oe x kind of extension so you will not open you will not able to open these files okay and they will give you one file here of the notepad in which they will give you some warnings like this your personal files are encrypted by ctb lockers and all those things and you will not able to access these files okay they will provide their email id and they will uh, give also some amount suppose 1500 dollars if you want your data back so just pay us this kind of amount okay or they will tell that just give us one file one or two file okay on that email and what they will do they will decrypt that file by providing the decryption key okay then you will act you will be able to access those those files and all other files for, uh, to access all those files what you guys have to do you guys have to pay a certain amount for example 1500 to 1000 dollar and they will give you some one software you will install that software on your device and that software will provide some decryption key then you will able to uh, access your all those devices okay but there are free tools or uh, some paid softwares also on the internet with the help of that you might be able to access those files so basically some major ransomware attacks that happened uh, previously we have named them as Reventon crypto locker crypto wall recently on the 2017 we have an attack called wanna cry attack okay you guys just google it you will be able to see what happened how many billions of dollars we have lost because of these attacks okay so all those things you can see on the google so trojan what is trojan trojans are malicious program that appear like regular application okay so you will not able to identify which is the real one so these trojans act like this okay basically our windows firewall which is our uh, we can say it is a software firewall so it can also identify these kinds of attacks which is a trojan attack next thing we have a worm so basically this worm first time it will come as a single file then it will spread itself or we can say it will spread to infect other systems also now we have a spyware what is spyware spyware is a common types of malware basically spyware will monitor the activities performed by a computer user on pc it will not harm your uh, device okay it will just monitor and it will capture the packet and it will send those packets to the hackers okay it is the most common kind of attack and then we have a rootkit basically it is a collection of software specifically designed to permit the malware then we have the key loggers you guys may be familiar with the key loggers basically what happens 
uh, it is kind of a software which will be installed on your system okay so when you will type your atm pin or your card number or your cv whatever you will type it will, whatever you will type with your keyboard okay it will capture that data and it will make a file and it will hand over it to the hackers so there was an example six to seven years ago some guys were putting plates on the uh, atm machine uh, on the pin where we type the pin they put one plate there and they will capture the pin of the users okay this is a scareware scareware basically it will just give you the warning okay like your pc is in danger you have to install this kind of uh, antivirus okay so let us see what is the scare is a type of malware which is designed to trick the victims so scareware tricks victims into purchasing or downloading useless software okay so some guys will get shocked that in my pc i have a virus so will they will click on that link okay so these scareware like works like this and this is the logic bomb so basically this logic bomb na this is a kind of a malware which will remain in your system okay it will not get active it will get active when we will use a specific date or time okay like when we are uh, writing our username and password then it will get active or we will uh, writing our uh, networks like otp password whatever we are doing it will get active that time it will not be active the whole time so it will be very difficult for the users to identify that his system is infected now we have a botnet so we know that attacker cannot attack thousands of pcs at a time so what is a concept there is a concept of botnet this is the botnet that attackers use so here bot stands for the uh, robot and net stands for the network so people who write and operate malware cannot manually log on to the every computer so they have infected instead they use botnets to manage a large number of systems so basically they will have a control server okay and they have attached uh, some botnets with this control server and from there they will initiate some attacks now we have a dos attacks which is a very common attack you guys can also do this attacks with the help of kali linux okay it is a simple kind of attack suppose uh, any result came on the government website we uh, might be able to see that result came on the at 11 pm 11 am but we might not be able to access our result or we might not be able to see our result at 5 pm also so these are happening because of the congestion in the network also but this congestion can be congestion can be provided with the help of these dos attacks also if a singer users is trying to uh pro is if a singer user is attacking or we can say it is uh doing this tcap sync flood attack if a single user is doing then we call as dos attack if a multiple users are doing this we call as ddos attack okay so now uh, next thing that we are going to do is talk about the firewall technologies okay so let me just tell you what are these firewall technologies let me open the okay so we will start with the palo alto but before moving on to palo alto we will see what is firewall security so what is the first thing that a firewall security from firewall security like se jara chalna padta hai na jeene ke chakke se to na pe thoda thoda chal okay so the first function of the firewall uh, firewall firewalls are is to filter the traffic So how we can filter the traffic? 
we'll talk okay, about those okay. things in the uh when we will do these parlo to training okay we will see how we can filter the traffic or a high how a uh, firewall filters the traffic so the traffic can be anything it can be a tcp udp telnet okay with the help of some security guards we are going to do this and the second function of the firewall security is to secure network infrastructure and there are two kinds of uh, we can say zone like inside and outside what is the difference between inside and outside we call our inside network as a private network which is our company's network and outside as a internet we call this as a trusted network and we call this outside as a untrusted network okay so here what we do we manage the inside and outside security okay and admin can filter unwanted traffic okay so whatever the traffic we want to access that type of uh, packets or we can say traffic will go into our network other traffic will get discarded okay and <clears throat> so basically there are mainly two types of firewall okay we will discuss other types of firewalls also but mainly there are two types of firewall so what are those firewalls they are software based and one is our hardware based so software based firewall basically they are inbuilt firewalls okay like in the microsoft we have firewall for windows we have firewall windows firewall its name is windows firewall so linux has its inbuilt firewall okay and what are the hardware firewalls it can be a uh, firewall of the organizations like palo alto for the cisco we have asa we have checkpoint so they are the firewalls for the different vendors okay now we have different types of firewalls uh, i have a pdf for that so let us understand the term firewall so the firewall the word firewall commonly describes a system or a device or a software so firewall is basically placed between a trusted network and an untrusted network i have told you what is our trusted network which is our the private network okay which is our company's network we call that as a trusted network so the work of the firewall is to act as a barrier between a trusted network and a untrusted network so a firewall security is a device which is used to stop or mitigate unauthorized access so the only traffic which is allowed on the uh, network is defined via the firewall policies so when we will understand we will understand the security concepts na there we will implement some policies because of those policies we will able to filter the traffic okay those policies we will implement like on the source ip we will define that this host will able to access that particular website or these or these network will able to able to uh, access that particular websites when we will implement those uh, policies there we will see so it grants or rejects access to traffic flows between trust untrusted and trusted zone okay so we will cover what is zone also 
ओके आई हैव जस्ट गिव यू अ ओवरव्यू व्हाट इज इनसाइड जोन एंड व्हाट इज आउटसाइड जोन सो देयर इज वन मोर जोन वी वी कॉल दैट एज अ डीएमसी जोन व्हिच इज अ डीमिलिटराइज्ड जोन ओके वी विल कवर ऑल दोस थिंग्स लेटर सो अ फाइव ऑफ मॉनिटर्स एंड चेक्स इनकमिंग एंड आउटगोइंग नेटवर्क रिलेटेड ट्रैफिक so what is the this is the main function of the firewall that what it does it may it monitors the, or we can say it checks the incoming and outgoing traffic okay so it decides to allow or block specific traffic based on defined set of security rules so we are the one who will uh, set some security rules okay so a firewall can be hardware software okay we have discussed this and it can be a cloud based or a virtual firewall so the first generation of firewall technologies consists of packet filters techniques okay so after that we have a second generation firewall which checks the application layer it works on the application layer like for example we have a application like facebook okay so earlier what happens our firewall suppose in this facebook uh we have three to four five different kinds of concepts okay like messaging feeding scrolling and all those things we can do anything so what happened earlier these firewall will just block this website whole website it will block okay or we can say whole application it will block but now we have a firewall which will have a functionality that we will able to uh, block this particular like messaging concept user will not able to message or user will not able to surf or we can say feed on this particular website it will not block the whole website or the whole application it will just block a particular content from that particular application or a website so these are the things that we can do from uh, today's firewall so the third generation firewall we call that as a stateful filters inspection and we can also call it ngfw which is our next generation firewall so these firewalls are relied upon to secure home and corporate networks from any attacks okay as you can see here that it is our good data which is our private network and this is a bad data which is our <coughs> internet so here are some different vendors which provides firewall technologies or which provides the firewalls so for that we have a fortinet palo alto cisco juniper nowadays uh <clears throat> palo alto is the one or fortinet and the cisco cisco is so these three are the main firewalls which are running in the industry right now and juniper is also one and there is sophos also it is not uh, present here so we will start what is stateful firewall so basically this stateful firewall what happens it maintains a state connection table okay it maintains a state connection table in this state connection table we have a entry of the source ip source port destination ip destination destination port and the layer 4 information either it can be tcp udp it will also uh, make the entry of the flags and the sequence number and the acknowledgement number so that whenever our data will go from the inside to outside na or we can say from the trusted network to the untrusted network it will create one table okay in that it will store the entry of that particular packet that has been gone from our private network to the public network so that when that packet will come from the private network to public network it should have a entry here okay if it doesn't have a entry it will block it okay but if you want to allow it we can allow it with the help of certain policies okay so let us see what is stateful firewall so it maintains this state of connection when packet is traveling for the appliance so stateful firewall maintains the state of connection in the state table okay so this is the state table this is the packet in which we have a data and the ip address so it will store the ip address information so after adding information in the state table it forwards the packet to the 
destination. So when it receives a reply packet, it matches the packet information. I just have told you that it whenever it will receive the reply packet. So when this like this is the service or this is a server. Okay, this is the destination. So it has gone there. Suppose its IP is ten dot one. Its IP is uh twenty dot two. So <clears throat> here it will entry like this ten dot one. Suppose in the source port it is like I am taking a random sixty. Okay, destination IP. We have twenty dot two. Destination port. Suppose I am writing here also. Uh, it is using same protocol TCP. It is a same packet <clears throat> flag. So sequence number. Suppose it is one. Right now acknowledgement is zero. So when this packet will come, it will have an entry of in the source IP. It will have twenty dot one. It will use a destination port twenty, and in the destination IP, it will have the source IP of this one twenty dot one sixty TCP. Same. <clears throat> Now this time we can say it is using ACK flag. Sequence number will remain same. Acknowledgement will be one, or we can say sequence number has been increased. So it will <clears throat> from this information, it will identify that it has to forward that packet. to my inside network or i have to drop it okay so if firewall receive the reply packet if it will match the packet if it will match it will accept otherwise it will drop the packet so this is how our stateful firewall works we will see all those things in the so this is the uh, flow of the stateful firewall okay so <clears throat> so first thing that it will look for into it will look for is it will look for the ingress interface what is ingress interface whatever interface in which our data from the interface uh, our data is incoming okay we call that as a ingress interface if uh, that particular packet has an existing connection okay with our end user Then it will just directly go into the layer seven inspection. If it doesn't have the existing connection, then it will move to the routing table. Okay, it will check the route to the destination. If it has the route to the destination, then it will go for the ACL. If it doesn't have the route to the destination, then what it will do? It will drop the packet. If it has the route to the destination, then it will look for the ACL, which is our access control list. These are the policies okay here we will implement the policy if it will match the acl then it will go into the net rule if it doesn't match the acl then it will drop the packet then it will check for the translation if the translation rule exists for that particular network or a particular host then it will go for the layer 7 inspection if translation is not there then it will drop the packet again and if the whatever rules we have configured at the layer 7 if those rules rules are matched uh, matched then it will forward that packet to the egress interface otherwise it will drop so these are the things that how a firewall works okay so in the interview they will they might will ask you that how what is the packet flow of the palo alto firewall so basically this uh packet flow na is same for the palo alto asa 48 or we can say 40 gate checkpoint so forth all fo uh, firewalls works on the same concept they have the same packet flow on the all the firewalls now we have a stateless firewall so what do you mean by stateless firewall basically this stateful stateless firewall will not make the that connection table or we can say state connection table okay i will share this pdf you guys this is the packet filtering firewall okay so whatever firewall uh, in which we use this extend acl named acl to filter the traffic we call that as a packet filter firewall so this firewall can also be named as the access less firewall okay so these firewalls we don't use uh, stateless firewall packet filtering firewall we what we use We use stateful firewall, and we can call that also a next generation firewall. So I am just introducing you to different types of firewall that we used to uh, use earlier. So this is the proxy firewall. We know uh, the meaning of the proxy. 
like whenever we go into the college we say that uh please put my proxy also so on the behalf of someone else someone is giving proxy of or we can say attendance of someone else so this is how this proxy firewall used to work so what happens there is a client there is a proxy server and there is a web server for client want to access this web server it will go with the uh, with the help of this proxy server what we, what it will do a uh, client will request a uh, web from the proxy server okay it is a inside zone and it's an outside zone we know that a firewall acts as a barrier between or it works on the between two different zones or we can say two different networks which is our inside and outside network so on the behalf of this client this proxy will request to the web from the web server okay now this web server will give reply to the proxy server it will give access to the proxy server now this proxy server will give reply to the client so this is how uh, proxy firewall used to work now we have a application firewall so basically it works on the layer 7 it will check the all the details of the layer 7 okay now we have some kind of personal firewalls also so these firewalls basically are our windows firewall we call that or we have some avas firewalls also uh any other firewall uh, i am not able to remember it so basically whatever firewall that we use on our system we call that as a personal firewalls okay so you guys can see uh, all those firewalls you can buy it avas is the famous one so i have named it now we have a transparent firewall we can make our palo alto firewall also as a transparent firewall okay i will show you when we will do the practicals okay so basically this transparent firewall works at the layer 2 and it forwards the frames based on the destination mac so it has the capability to filter the traffic from layer 2 to layer 7 of osi model now we have a virtual wire uh, virtual wire concept virtual wire firewall concepts okay we will see uh, when we will do the practicals now we have a zone based firewall so this firewall works according to the zones like for example i have given this internet as a zone as outside zone and this one as a inside zone and this is a dmz so it will act as a zone based firewall so basically zone based firewall is the most advanced method of stateful firewall so zone uh, sorry zone uh, zone based firewall is available on cisco ios routers okay on the routers also we can uh, do little bit a uh, little bit uh, firewall concepts uh, i will show you on some cisco routers when we will configure vpns on the palo alto firewalls na then i will show you that how we can configure vpn on the just a little bit overview like how we can create side to side vpn on the cisco routers in zbf we have a different zones created and assigned interfaces to different zones and all those things we have a cloud based firewall so it is a we can also call it a software based firewalls also okay so it is deployed on the cloud concepts now we have a virtual firewall utm firewall so basically this utm firewall and next generation firewall na they are same basically they are same okay so the uh, term utm firewall or simply utm unified threat management is the terminology so it is given to hardware or software device which is capable of assembling various security functions okay such as packet filtering so it can perform everything that our next generation firewall can do that is packet filtering proxy ids and intrusion detection system intrusion prevention system protection against malware application uh, control so utm firewall can do everything but what is the difference between next generation firewall and the utm firewall so basically utm how a utm firewall works na so basically suppose a packet come okay let me just so if your packet will come then it will go here it will go for uh, the ur filtering inspection then it will go for the iam dlp qos proxy ips it will just go one by one packet will go one by one but in the next generation firewall na, how it works it will just all the inspection will be done in one way or we can say in one 
एट अ पर्टिकुलर टाइम ऑल दो थिंग्स विल बी इंस्पेक्टेड एट अ पर्टिकुलर टाइम सो वी आर गोन कवर दिस नेक्स्ट जनरेशन फायर वॉल सो लेट एस जस्ट सी वट इज नेक्स्ट जनरेशन फायर वॉल सो नेक्स्ट जनरेशन फायर वॉल परफॉर्म द रोल ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल फायर वॉल एंड इट एड्स एन जी आई पी एस फीचर्स सो नेक्स्ट जनरेशन फायर वॉल इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द थर्ड जनरेशन फायर वॉल ऑफ फायर वॉल टेक्नोलॉजीज सो दिस पालो ऑल्टो इज द ओनली फायर वॉल इन विच वी हैव अप अवेयरनेस कंट्रोल आई डी एंड अजर आई डी कॉन्सेप्ट एप आई डी user id and a content id firewall concept so that's why palo alto firewall is the firewall which uh, is trending nowadays in the industry okay because of this feature app id user id and content id so next generation firewall provide deep packet inspection of traffic and next generation firewall add application level inspection and intrusion prevention so all those things okay we will uh, do these things now we have a palo alto okay so <clears throat> i will share this pdf so basically in this pdf it is talking about the palo alto how palo alto started uh, let me just remove it okay so basically palo alto is a city in a california in the san, uh, san francisco which is uh, area in the usa so it is named after the city okay it is started in 2005 by near zook okay you can see <coughs> all those information when i will share it is not important to us so <coughs> the course that we are doing that is a pc and sc okay it is an expert level so it has a exam price uh, maybe it gets changed 160 dollar around and it is it has a duration of 80 minutes and it you will get uh, able to see 75 questions if you will guys opt for the exam okay so and it works on the sp3 algorithm uh, maybe we can see here okay so palo alto firewalls are based on the unique single pass parallel processing architecture okay so it's an sp3 architecture we'll cover this thing that what is app id what is user id what is content id when the topics will come we'll cover all those things so today we are going to just do these things okay now i will just tell you that how we can install the palo alto images so that when we when we will start the uh, some labs basic labs that uh, when we will access the cli or we will, when we will access the gui of the palo alto firewall then you guys can also do some practice okay so basically you just go have to go here and just go into the eve community mm from here eve community you just have to install this eve ng okay it will provide you one link okay i will share the link also you can either use uh, ovf this google mirror or i will recommend this mega version okay because uh, you will be able to easily download with the help of this mega mirror and this is the one thing that you have to download and i will also share the link also okay i have a uh, this evng on my drive also i will share this also with you guys so that you guys will not uh, have to find all those things so it is around uh, 7 to 8 gb file and you guys have to install the vm workstation also so you guys can install not the pro version that pro version will be the uh, paid version you guys have to write vm where workstation i am using the pro version right now but you guys have to use uh, vm where workstation okay and we have a lab concept also so that will be available for the paid users only so for you guys to you guys can also practice here also so what you have guys have to do how we can install that you will see here a file you just have to click on the open virtual machine okay and you will see when you guys will install that particular file now you just have to open this file click on this file and just open it okay as i have already installed it is just directly opening it so after that you you will see some settings okay so i am just showing you some settings here i have given a uh, 13 gb to my this virtual machine which is my uh, which is eve 
okay you guys can give minimum 8 gb you guys have to give okay minimum 8 gb for the firewall access and the processor if your uh, if you haven't checked uh, this thing na dot uh, this virtual intel vt it means you will not able to access those firewalls okay you have to uh, on the virtualization uh, maybe in some devices or in some pcs uh virtualization concept is off you can open it with the help of you have to go into the bios version from there you can open it and i have uh, given two space one is of 40 gb and one is of 60 gb and when you guys will use uh, okay i have done here net concept okay i have checked on the net according to my usage but you will use the bridge one okay you will able to access the bridge if by chance you are in some company okay where we you uh, not getting ip like i have got to uh, i will show you there okay i am using net here okay if you guys are not getting in this ip like i have uh, got this ip 192.168.2.128 okay if you guys will not get able to get that ip then you can change setting on the net i will show you that uh, how we can do changes on the net concept also so <clears throat> and there is one more software that you guys have to download that is win scp let me show you so at the starting it will ask you for the uh, username okay so you will write whatever the ip you got on the evng okay i got the ip 192.168.2.128 okay as my session has already uh, already been created so i don't have to write it down i have to just log in uh, skip it and the uh, my default password is if okay your password will also be the if so for example i have some eve images here okay i will share the these images link also okay here you will get the cisco routers images uh, palo alto firewall image uh i think c okay as image is not here so what you guys have to do you have to go to the opt okay then you guys have to go to the unit lab uh then you guys have to go to the add-ons okay now there are two things one is qmu one is iol okay if you guys have to install the cisco iol image <coughs> cisco iol images sorry cisco iol uh, cisco iol uh, cisco iol images which is of router and switches images then you have to just select to the iol okay like here i have the bin file you have to just click on it and just install that file just drag and drop here okay you can copy it also as i have already installed one file okay let me just overwrite also so it will install like this okay now if you want to install the firewall images come back to the add-ons then go into the qmu okay as you can see here i have uh, images of uh, asa fortinet palo alto so you guys have to install the palo alto now you guys what you guys have to do you guys have to just drag and drop this palo alto image okay i am just cancelling it as i have already installed it okay and there is one more thing that when you will install that folder now what evng uh, there is a first thing that you have to do okay it has been installed so first thing that you have to name it like this this file which is a palo alto file you have to this is the image of the palo alto firewall you have to name it like vitua dot q cow 2 okay and you have to change the folder name also like this palo alto hyphen 8.0.1 if you guys will get confused you can also search it on on the google even g palo alto file name okay so here you can see the file name of the or we can, sorry folder name of the palo alto so if you are using as we are using 8.0.1 so we have used the folder name as like this and the download file name will be like this okay so for anything like if you want to use uh windows machine so you guys have to just go here and write it down window file name okay it will show you different file names like 
for different vendors for cisco it is cda for cisco esa for fortigate it is fortinet hyphen so you uh, whenever you guys will get confused okay and there one more thing when you guys will install this image na you guys have to run one more command where you guys have to run that command here on this evng machine okay what is that command that is command we call as a fix permission command okay just go to the google right evng fix permission okay and you have to run this command which is opt unit lab wrapper hyphen a fix permission let me just open it okay so this is the command that you guys will run after installing the image okay every time you have to install whenever you will add any new image na on this with the help of this win scp then you have to guys use this command so how you can do it uh, just go here uh, it's root eve okay go here i am just copying it just paste it okay and just click here and enter it okay so you can run this command two times okay it will just benefit you just paste it again okay after that you can open this evng like this uh, let me just close my virtual machine power off so how you can after installing everything whatever i have told you you guys will just click here okay and power on this virtual machine let us wait for a second yes evng evng community version is free okay we will share the link also mm, okay so now what you guys have to do you will get one ip here okay 192.168.2.128 you uh, uh, you guys can use any web browser i am using chrome i will recommend you guys chrome 2.128 you guys will open it sometimes it will take time let us open it one more time okay it has been opened okay so there it will uh, it is not asking me username and password i have to just completely shut down my virtual machine then it will ask okay if it will not ask for the, if it will ask for the username and password then the default uh, username and password is root and oh sorry admin and eve uh, i think it's root and eve mm. okay it uh, admin and eve i think it's a default username and password okay from there you can use it okay so after installing the images you can you will be able to find your palo alto firewall from here okay you have to just save it and to open it you have to just start it okay so in the uh tomorrow's lecture we will access this palo alto firewall and we will some uh, we will see some cli commands and we will go through the dashboard also okay on the tomorrow's lecture i will show you okay so that's it for today guys okay if you guys have any question just tell me ask me anything so you are going very fast sir i am going very fast yeah look it's a just a theoretical concept okay that's why 
I want to just over this theoretical concept because most of the guys got bored in this theoretical concept. Okay, so main thing when we will discuss uh, those things, na, like we will discuss some commands, we will discuss about the concepts. Then I will go in a slow pace. Okay. and you guys just open your mic whenever i will go fast na or you guys will not understand anything just open your mic and just ask me you can ask me okay just tell me that uh, we want to uh, like <clears throat> just revise this concept again okay we will do revision also for the first 5 to 10 minutes we will uh, do revision then we'll start the new sessions okay anything else Like you want to ask if anything? If my laptop is less configuration, then how we do the practical? Okay, what is the okay? Tell me your the RAM size. Uh, RAM, what is your RAM? Eight GB. Eight GB RAM. Okay, you have a eight GB RAM, and your processor is i three. No, i five. I five. Okay. So can you upgrade your RAM? Yes. Just four GB. Uh, look, you can run this Eve engine, na, on the four GB also. But this Palo Alto firewall, na, it's a little bit heavy. Okay. So you will, what will be the minimum requirement? Uh, I will suggest uh eight GB. But if you guys have a sixteen GB RAM, na, then you guys have to give minimum twelve to thirteen GB RAM. Okay. So that when you will guys you use na two firewalls like. If I will take graphical access of this Palo Alto firewall, na it will work for a single user. Look, we can na. Uh, let me just show you. We can increase the. Not not lagging. You will not see the lagging, but you will see na that. <coughs> let me just show you one thing. <coughs> you can increase the RAM size from here also. Okay, for the four GB, it will need for the Palo Alto firewall. It's a default setting. So I used to run, not used to. I run this Palo Alto firewall on the eight GB RAM, single firewall. Okay, for the eight GB. Like if I have you, I am using like uh, I do. I have the topology and thing. Like here, I I have only one firewall. Okay, let me just show you. So <clears throat> this is the basic topology. We will do many topologies. Okay, so here I am using one firewall and two route, ah, uh, three routers and one MLS switch. Okay, so here they all need some RAM. Okay, and if you guys will give six GB RAM to the virtual machine, and you guys are using this Palo Alto needs minimum four GB. Okay, four GB RAM only this Palo Alto firewall is working, and they both all the devices will need at least one one GB RAM. so how they will, you will, you might will able to your this device will get shut down okay these are the problems you will face and if you will use multiple firewalls like you are using two firewalls two a not asa this what is this palo alto fire if you guys are using two palo alto firewalls so what if you have taken the gui access okay and you have done some configuration there okay and then you opened your new uh, gui of uh, another firewall Okay, and you are accessing me. Then when you will go back again, na, then it will close that session. If you have committed, then your all configuration will be gone. So these are the small things that you will be able to see uh, in this virtual machine. Okay, but in the real scene scenario, you will not find any issue. So I will recommend that you guys put minimum six GB on the virtual machine. If you guys have a eight GB RAM, then I will recommend to buy a four GB. ram if you guys have a slot there then just install it it will just benefit you if you guys can install up to 16 gb then it's well and good okay and Any if you are from from your side yeah we will give virtual lab uh, they will provide you uh, we will share it on the group uh, that how you guys can access the virtual uh, machines okay i think that is for the paid version i am not confirmed yet okay i will confirm it and tell you why tomorrow okay or they will update uh, that thing in the group okay so are you going to provide any pdf also yes yes i will uh, share na some whatever topics we will cover na i will give uh, pdf of those topics okay 
बट आई विल स्टिल रिकमेंड दैट वट एवर वी कवर ना ऑन दी क्लासेस ओके यू गैस मेक योर नोट्स ऑल्सो ओके इट विल बेनिफिट यू एंड प्लीज मेक टू नोटबुक्स वन इज फॉर योर नोट्स एंड वन इज फॉर द इंटरव्यू पर्पज ओके आई विल गिव यू सम क्वेश्चन एवरी डे फ्रॉम टूमोरो ओके आई विल गिव सम क्वेश्चन लाइक फाइव टू टेन क्वेश्चन एवरी डे सो दैट you can go through all those questions whenever you do the revision okay those questions will help you or i will update those questions on the group okay you guys can copy those questions or take those questions from i will not provide the answer of those questions you guys have to find those answers okay and i will provide the pdf that will benefit you so are you going to provide the link also for download these application yes 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 i will provide you the links either i will give you my drive link or i will just provide you the eve community link okay from the eve community you can easily find i have shown you na if they will uh, give you the recording you can see from there just write down here eve community okay it's a free version here from here you can install it why i don't recommend na google drive na google drive has a, a concept of that if a file size is more than 2 gb na then they will some files will get missed okay like if 10 guys are installing na then only 5 guys will be able to use that file five guys will lose their data for that if you have a very high end connection na like around 50 to 60 mbps then you can install from my google drive if you guys have a obviously if you are on a home network then we have a access of around 10 to 20 mbps that's why i don't recommend it but Uh, i will share the vmware machine also and the evng and the ios images i will give you i will provide you because ios images are little bit hard to find okay so i will provide you all those links you guys will install okay and tomorrow you guys will tell me that uh, if you guys are facing any problem while uh, installing the images okay i will show you that today i have showed you that how you can install it so you have to install that win scp also okay that win scp software also this software is also free okay everything is free right now evng community is also free you guys are not evng paid version don't use the paid version okay evng community is free you guys can uh, do anything on the evng community and the vmware like i am using the pro version because i have the license key uh you guys can use the vm uh that's a vmware player i think vmware player it will ins- uh, it will work there also from where we can download those i will give you the links okay if you guys how will... much time take to complete the course uh look this is the free version will be completed in the 5 days okay i have shown you this and the paid version that will be run uh, properly okay it will took around 26 sessions 25 to 26 sessions i'm talking about the sessions not days okay like uh, we will cover monday to friday 5 days so around 26 days i need proper to cover the whole palo alto syllabus okay hmm. so are you guys uh, what what are your backgrounds guys can you just tell me like have you done ccna or are you working i have completed ccna ccnp okay ccnp what enterprise or security enterprise yeah okay you have completed the ccnp enterprise okay so is there anyone who have just completed this the cc na concepts who have just completed ccna and is just uh, directly going into this firewall Mm-hmm. i am ask i am asking this because uh, many of uh, we know that in the ccna we have just a overview of the routing concepts okay so what i will do so when we will do the routing on this firewalls na i will go through a little bit extra okay i will not just directly start the uh, routing on the firewall i will just i will cover overview of the routing also like uh, how a packet flows on the routers okay all those things how static routing works how our default routing works all those things 
if you guys have already done the ccnp then <laughs> there is no need but if there is someone who haven't done the ccnp and has been directly enrolled to the, from ccna to firewall okay then i will cover those basic concepts also okay and i will share some topics also so just go look into those topics so that when we will uh, start our uh, this practical things na so that you will uh, guys will not get stuck and please revise whatever we will do today na revise it today take 15 20 minutes and revise everything whatever we will share or whatever the uh, was the recording again okay and if my pace is fast just tell me stop me and just tell me your pace is uh, too fast just go a little bit slow okay i will just slow my pace <clears throat> okay anything else you guys want to know about the course anything whatever the things that will cover on the uh, those 25 to 26 session na i will show you at the end of the class on the fifth the day okay anything else guys no sir okay think from my end yeah. okay so bye bye guys take care Hello. have a nice day oh. just just one, just one second nikhil okay okay hello hi my name is riyaz i am founder of 3dp networks so we'll provide a preloaded lab on the evng r platform basically we'll provide a rack session to the customer so we'll give 10 rack session with one year of validity uh, currently we are having a offer of that christmas and new year offer so we are giving 50% off so who are guys interested please let us know or we just provide you the link for that registration also so these are the actually offer is going on for palo alto and combo offer also if you guys interested you can just do registration register the same just once and i'm sending the links also for registration if anybody is looking for the paid training just one second i just send it a link of registration if anybody looking for a paid training please let us know you can just fill the form is everybody got the link hello ah uh, yes okay. uh, okay. yes i can see the yeah, any query please let me know actually we will provide a rack also we are having a dell dell server with evng installed lab We no 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 so, need to install anything on that. After Nikhil sir share as the pre, that labs on the EVNG of that Palo Alto will upload it accordingly and will provide a VPN session so you can run wherever you want. Entire compute and CPU memory will be used by that a CDP rack only. You need you not to just need to connect your VPN. That's it. It's a web based tool is there like Nikhil sir shows to you. It's a web based. So combo will include uh, Palo Alto as well as there are too many combo combinations are there. If you are looking for CCN plus Palo Alto is also there. Palo Alto plus Juniper is there. Palo Alto plus the third one is that you can if you are looking for entire three also all the thick things are there. If you are looking for what? So, yeah. So these all are including twelve thousand. Twelve thousand that Palo Alto fees is twelve thousand. If looking for CCN. Will give you seventeen thousand. Only the Palo Alto fee is twelve thousand. If you are looking for some any combo, we'll provide a combo also. Okay. So currently, free training Juniper is also going on. If anybody wants to attend, they can. I'm just sharing that that that's a group link also. What's up link? Just one second. So after to. this. After this course, do you have to uh, go for the certification, or directly we can apply for the job? We'll help for your basically for interview. Certification is not important actually. If you're looking for a certification, anybody can do certification. But a technical, you should understand a technicality. If the bunch is on, then I'm sharing the link. This is Juniper WhatsApp link. If anybody wants to join, they can. So from seven to seven five seven to nine p.m. Juniper is there. Nine to eleven, Palo Alto training is going.
basically we will conduct na after every 7 days we will conduct a mock interview session okay there i am going to ask some questions which are industry based questions so those questions will help you to get a job okay certification basically it is not that much important because whenever a uh, interviewer will ask na he will not look into your certification because he know that anyone can do certificate get a certificate right now nowadays so he will see your knowledge if you have if your concepts are clear then you can easily apply for the job you will you can easily get a job okay and the palo palo alto firewall basically is in demand right now okay so there are so, so we, many vacancies right now will provide us completion certificate from cdp so if you complete the entire course will provide the cdp completion certificate of palo alto That is a PC NSC. Guys, any any question? Or I think we can end the session. Nikhil, I think everybody is done. Yes. We'll upload. We'll upload recorded video on by tomorrow on the YouTube channel. <coughs> Okay, guys, we'll meet. We'll meet nine o'clock. Okay. I S T. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.